best way to learn is to teach. So use your child as an opportunity to express what you've learned and also use them as an accountability tool, right? Because again, we want the best for our kids. We want them to learn from us and, you know, our kids learn from seeing and seeing what we're doing and not just from what we're saying. Building family wealth and happiness becomes a lot easier when you have time. And what do our kids have in abundance? Time. Time to save, time to invest, and even time to make mistakes and still build the generational wealth that could positively impact your family tree for centuries to come. On our generational wealth segment today, we're going to interview author and financial educator Clifton Corbin. Clifton has spent years studying finance, and he's a passionate advocate for advancing financial literacy of children and young adults. He's the author of multiple books, including one of his latest entitled Your Kids, Their Money, A Parent's Guide to Raising Financially Literate Children. Today, we're going to learn from Clifton about how to teach your child the value of money. Welcome to the show, Clifton. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Great to have you here. Let's talk about the importance of talking to our kids about money. Why is that important? Sure. So unfortunately, money is still kind of a taboo subject in our culture, in our society. So if we're not talking openly with our kids about money, they won't have a chance to learn about how money works, how we acquire money, how we use our money. We won't give them a chance to learn our values when it comes to money. So there's so many benefits that come just from talking openly within our own families about money. So it's one of the things, I, like you said, I like to advocate especially for that because so many learnings come naturally and organically just from having conversations and being open and willing to talk to our kids and answer your questions when it comes to money. I think that's fantastic. And how early should we be starting this? I mean, we're, we're parents, we, we have conversations about uh, parenting on the show. Uh, how early is too early? Sure, so I like to say, as soon as your kids start to recognize that money is something that you're using to transact, something you're using to trade and, and get, uh, you know, goods and services, they will notice it naturally. Like there's no way that we can go through, you know, most of our days without at least interacting with money in some way. And if we have our kids along with us, they will notice it as well. So once they start asking about it, once they start talking about it, once they start noticing it, it's a great chance to start, you know, having those early conversations. Like you're not going to jump right into talking about inflation and interest at those ages, you know, at that four or five, six years uh, of age, but you could start talking to them about, you know, well, what is money? Why do we need it? What are we using it for? How do I get it? So those early conversations can happen pretty early. Like I said, four or five is most kids will start at least recognizing that money is something that they, uh, that they need, especially once they start wanting to acquire and get things of their own. So those are some good early indicators that, you know, now is a good time to start these conversations. That's great. Yeah. So we're talking uh, around that time frame, and you're, you're out and about with them. Maybe some examples of some practical ways to, to share some of these lessons, maybe just from everyday things. What, what are some examples? Sure. So like one of the things I love doing just when my kids were little, and I think it's great for all youngsters is if you bring your kids grocery shopping with you, there's so much learning that can happen there, right? You have to do the transacting you get a chance to talk about you know budgeting and how much money i've set aside for these groceries you could start talking about needs versus wants like do i need the strawberries or do i want the strawberries can we substitute <laughs> strawberries for bananas you know you can even get into those conversations about inflation and why things are getting so expensive and you know the cost curve like supply versus demand so there's so many opportunities there but like i say just make it part of your every day the last thing i want to do is encourage parents to you know get a whiteboard and sit kids down by the fireplace and have <laughs> <laughs> fireside chats about money like that's not necessary there's opportunities that kind of arise naturally throughout our day as we're interacting with our kids to talk to them about what we're doing why we're doing it when it comes to money and like i said when those opportunities come i just say take advantage of them they're the kids are naturally curious so use that curiosity and feed that curiosity by talking to them about it and, and the learning will come. The learning will come. I think that's great. I think, yeah, sometimes maybe parents who say, well, I don't know a ton about money or I don't have that background. Like, what could I teach them? Teach them your everyday life. Exactly. Teach them how you're dealing with money. And a big part of dealing with money is spending money and getting money in kids' hands. Talk to us about how we can teach our kids how to spend money wisely. Sure. So one of the things I like to advocate, if it works within your budget, like one of the things I, I preface this with is, you know, financial literacy, personal finance is personal first. So when you're teaching financial literacy, take it all with the, you know, 
the caveat that it has to work with your family, with your values and your budget. But if it works within your budget to give your child an allowance, I love that because it gives them an opportunity to start practicing. One of the things I say often is the more our children get a chance to practice using money, whether that be, you know, spending, saving, uh, investing, what have you, the more chances they get to do that while they're home with you in a safe place where you can coach and guide and, you know, advise them, the more chances they have to learn, make mistakes, but make it in a way that it's safe, where it's not going to hurt their credit score, where it's not going to have major ramifications down the road. It's a chance for them to learn, make those mistakes early. So an allowance is a great opportunity to, to do just that because now they have their own money to start spending, to start saving, to start investing, to start using money in a way that's practical. Once you start getting that practical experience with it, it becomes more real. It becomes more uh, tangible and it helps to you know really reinforce a lot of the things that you'll be talking to them about. Yeah, that's great. Now, are you an advocate for physical cash where they're, hey, utilizing this in the store or how do you feel about debit cards? I guess talk, talk to us about that. Sure, you. sure. So for the youngsters, I love using cash. I know it's, you know, cash isn't something that a lot of us have on hand anymore. Most of us have gone cash free or at least some of us have. Uh, but for the youngsters, because they can hold it, because they can count it, because they can see it, because it's tangible, it just feels more real. It's a lot harder to go to a store and physically let go of a $1 or $5 bill or $20 bill than it is when you're doing like tapping a, a card or tapping a phone. You feel that loss and you know there's loss aversion and you want your child to actually understand there's a cost that's coming from you making this transaction. And you, again, you, it's easier to count and see and you know have a balance when you can actually see how much money you have as opposed to numbers on a screen. So for the younger ages, I love using cash. Once they've understood cash and they get a good handle of it, I have no problem moving to a debit card or some of these uh, prepaid cards that we see out there. I think they're actually quite nice, but I want to make sure that our kids have a good understanding of the basics before they start moving to the digital. Like the digital can come and the digital will come. There's no way to avoid it, but make sure they have that, you know, that solid foundation before you move to the, to the digital. I think that's great. I think sometimes I need a reminder with some cash in my hands too, because uh, I do a little swipe, swipe, tap, tap a little too much. I'm like, oh, whoops, <laughs> that's more than I thought and uh, didn't have a plan for. So I, I think that's a good reminder for adults as well. Let's talk about saving in general, because... I don't know. I think I've been doing this for a while. The word save, it's just not the sexiest word, you know, the most exciting word. Uh, so how can we encourage our kids to want to save? Sure. So one of the things I talk about is creating an op talking to your kids more about not saving what they get via saving. So when you save, you have op you, you're basically you're stockpiling opportunities, really, what is what I like to say. So what I talk to parents about is tell your kids that you're, you know, you want to have an opportunity fund, right? So if your friends go to the fair or to the movies and you've spent all your money because, you know, you wanted to buy X, Y, or Z, but you spent everything that you have, now you're going to miss out on those opportunities. So having a little bit of money saved up as an opportunity fund, savings is what we're talking about, but frame it in the form of you want to be able to afford opportunities down the road and that might encourage them to keep a little bit money keep a little bit of their money uh set aside for those opportunities that come because it's one thing like we all know is that fear of missing out right so if you can use that fear of missing out that fomo to help encourage them to keep some money set aside it will help to start establishing that saving that keeping some of their money set aside that idea of you don't want to use all of your money you want to you know live within your means and keep some of that money set aside so the opportunity fund i think is a great way of you know encouraging that saving habit i think that's great and i, I think it's a good reframe i keep bringing this back i think it's a good reframe for adults too because sometimes when you're like well i should save but then you're like why mm -hmm. why should i say you put a label on it you put a reason on it hey this is for vacations i mean obviously for kids we're talking about maybe a new bike mm -hmm. you know for my daughter at her age it's like she wants to save up for her cell phone things like that so she has an opportunity to have a nice phone exactly. and to be able to communicate with their friends. So if you put a label to it, it becomes a little bit more tangible. Let's talk to the parent who's listening right now and just says, I'm a financial mess. How can I teach my kids how to handle money? What would you say to that person? Sure. So I, I do get this question often and a few things I like to say. One, you know more than your child does, right? So your child's coming from a point of zero, whereas if you're, you know, you've made some missteps along the way, you could learn from those. You could at least teach what you've learned so that they can hopefully avoid the mistakes that you made. Second thing I like to say is, if you feel like you're not in the place you want to be, 
and you have a child and you want to make sure that they end up in a place that's, you know, hopefully better than you. That's kind of what we all want from our, for our children. This is an opportunity for you to learn. This is an opportunity for you to go seek out, you know, books or courses or podcasters or advisors or coaches to then learn. And one of the, you know, we hear this all the time. The best way to learn is to teach. So use your child as an opportunity to express what you've learned and also use them as an accountability tool, right? Because again, we want the best for our kids. We want them to learn from us and, you know, our kids learn from seeing and seeing what we're doing and not just from what we're saying. So if we can actually show them that, you know, we're not just saying these things, but we're living these things, it will help them grow. It will help them learn. So there's a, there's an opportunity there for you as well. And I, that's whether you've, you know, made missteps or not, there's an opportunity there for you in any way to make sure that you're living the values that you want your kids to hopefully, as you know, aspire to. Absolutely. And for a lot of people listening to this show, I think we're, we're all about improvement, you know, and, and getting a, just a, a fraction better than where we were uh, yesterday. And I know you're putting out some great resources out there to help people with, to gain that knowledge, to gain that confidence. Tell people about your book and, and where they can get it. Sure. So my first book is called Your Kids, Their Money. It's a parent's guide to raising financial literate children. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it, you can get it basically where any books are sold. There's the audio, ver there's the audible version. There's a uh, Kindle version. There's a paperback. And like I said, you can, you can get that pretty much anywhere. Uh, my second book is uh, Richest Man in Babylon, which isn't my book. It's actually a revised version of a classic, uh, but I, re I revised it with my, the help of my son, who's a, a you know about he's ten years old. And so we wrote it in a way that it would be easy for both young people and older people to understand, uh, with a lot more modern language. Because again, the book is a classic; it's about a hundred years old. So uh, it's the richest man in Babylon revised for modern times. Again, you can find that on Amazon or anywhere books are sold. And I've got a resource that I want to make sure that your pa parents out there know about. It's uh, basically a workbook. It does a lot of that early money recognition. It helps with some money math. Uh, and it's called, and you can get it at uh, kidsmoneyworkbook.com. So that's a free resource. You can download that at any time. Again, at kidsmoneyworkbook.com. Uh, there's all kinds of fun activities in there for your kids to work independently or with you as a guide. And again, it just helps with that early financial literacy with word recognition and doing change for you know, different purchases. So again, it gives them an opportunity to start practicing some of these early financial literacy skills. I love it, Clifton. Yeah. If you're, if you're lacking a little of that confidence, I think having a guide can help you and just give it a little bit of that confidence so you can help your kids and be that example to them so they can see what financial literacy, financial confidence looks like. Clifton, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. It was my pleasure, Andy. Thank you so much for what you do. 